Hey guys, I'm Chani and you're watching The Art of Science. So if you're a subscriber, welcome back. If not, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss an update. Last week, we learned about the first law of motion, which is the law of inertia. It states that a body at rest remains at rest and a body in motion remains in motion unless acted upon by an external force. So what happens to the body when it's acted upon by this external force? That's exactly what we are going to learn today. Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law focuses on the quantities that are influenced depending on the force applied. Let's find out what these quantities are. Here, I have this huge encyclopedia and one little notepad. Let's try to pick them up with one hand. This is easy. Uh-oh, wait, this definitely requires more energy. Let me use both my hands. Clearly, the encyclopedia weighs more than the notepad. So the one quantity that force depends on is the mass of the object. Higher the mass, higher is the force required. And lower the mass, lower is the force required to move an object. And therefore, we can say that force is directly proportional to the mass of the object. Now, let's look at the other quantity. Let's take these two markers that weigh the same. I'm going to push the blue one with greater force and the pink one with relatively less force. The blue marker travelled a greater distance and with more speed compared to the pink marker. This means that if we apply more force, the acceleration of an object increases. Wait, but what is acceleration? Acceleration is nothing but the rate of change of speed. For example, this car changes its speed from 40 km per hour to 20 km per hour in a given time. The speed is decreasing and therefore we can say that the acceleration is negative. If the speed of the car increases from 20 km per hour to 40 km per hour in the given time, then the car is said to be accelerating. And in the last case, if the speed of the car remains unchanged, that is, if it was travelling with a speed of 40 km per hour and continues to travel at the same speed in the given time, then the acceleration is zero because there is no change of speed in that amount of time. Now that we know what acceleration is, we can definitely say that if we apply more force, the acceleration of an object increases because as we saw earlier, the blue marker travelled at a higher speed when more force was applied. And therefore, force is also directly proportional to the acceleration of an object. Let's combine the two and we get force equals to mass times acceleration. Greater the mass, greater is the force required and if the force increases, the acceleration of the object also increases. Finally, let's look at the definition of the second law. It states that the rate of change of momentum of an object is proportional to the applied unbalanced force in the direction of the force. Wait, this is way too confusing, right? And how is this even related to what we did? Let's break it down and simplify it. Momentum is a property of a moving body and it is a product of an object's mass and the velocity. So to simplify the definition of the second law, it says that force is directly proportional to the rate of change of momentum. So this means that force is directly proportional to the final momentum minus the initial momentum upon time. Let's take the common mass out and we get that force is directly proportional to mass multiplied by final velocity minus initial velocity upon time. This is nothing but the rate of change of velocity and the rate of change of velocity as we saw earlier is the acceleration of an object. On removing the proportionality sign, we simply get force equals to mass times acceleration which is exactly what we did earlier. If you have any doubts, let us know in the comments below and we'll see you next week.